Have you thought of breaking through? Ain't it part of what you do? Catch a victim while he's dumb. Break his larynx with your well, It's high time. It's time to get high. Well, this ain't no goddamn dream. It's exactly what it seems. Wake up today just to lay back down and say I won't be coming back let's call it a heart attack give me some of that knack this is just a final payback they all flipped on me took my passions left me be when I had a place to sit a goddamn attitude to fit talk real smooth And welcome back, boys and girls, for another special edition of the Michael Deacon Program. Joining me in a moment is Mr. Robert Stanley. He is an author, former correspondent, and researcher known for his work on modern and ancient mysteries. He has written books like Close Encounters on Capitol Hill and Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. Robert has traveled extensively, visiting over 50 countries. His career spanning over 40 years, he's been featured across various media platforms, and he's no stranger here. We hope you enjoy this one. And joining me right now is Mr. Robert Stanley. How's it going? Hey, Michael. Yeah, hi. Nice to speak with you again. Awesome. Yes, sir. Always nice to talk to you. And thanks for being here. Welcome back. You are one of the most requested guests around these parts, Robert. Really? Oh, yes. We have quite the conversations, and tonight will be no different. Okay. And my goodness, we've got a, we got a few things to cover, of course. Just mm -hmm. like uh, the book, The Disappearance of the Universe. Yeah. And, you know, I had never heard of it before, and I've been reading it. There's even a chapter called Better Than Sex. <laughs> it's an interesting book, to say the very least, Robert. It's okay. So I, I if anybody asks, I would just say do a what if. What if that's the, what they're discussing in that book is accurate. And that way you don't feel threatened like, uh, wait a second, these people are telling me that I'm not even here. That doesn't make any sense at all, man. It's right. like, so part of us, the, what they call the ego, we all know about the ego, is um, trying to keep us here. And it does that in a lot of different ways. And skepticism is healthy, but up to a point, you know, it's like, uh, kind of like we were discussing off there, that, you know, there's some people that are taking skepticism to a whole nother level and turning it into like weaponizing the fact that, you know, everybody has a different opinion. Um, and actually shutting other people down doesn't stop the difference of opinion at all. Right. It just somehow makes them feel a little bit better or less threatened. But obviously there's a lot of very insecure people on this planet right now. Oh my. <laughs> You're telling me, this. yeah, there's a lot out there yeah. that are, uh, so desperate to drag you down. Yeah. So, okay. I, I, you know, I've talked to you quite a few times this year and I don't remember where we led the last time, but let's just recap that. I know this year I told you I was going to get off the internet entirely. Yes, you were, that was the plan. Yes. You were playing to unplug from the matrix in other words. Right. Right. Well, okay. Yes. And, all right. To be right. Just to be transparent. I'm going to tell you that was my plan until I got a call a few months later from coast to coast AM and uh, they were desperate to have somebody come on and be the guest because the guest that was scheduled canceled last minute. So uh -huh. basically the producer, I, you know, Lisa, she was, she right. was begging me, please, please, Robert. Wow. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, I guess if I ever want to come on that show again, I better, you better play you know, ball. Help yeah. them out. So I did. And the, but the thing was, I, I told her, I said, look, I don't have a website. All I have is an email. She goes, well, your books are, 
uh, leaked up on my on our you know coast to coast website. And I right. said, okay, fine, whatever, you know. But that just didn't sit well with me. And the other thing was, I said, is there a topic? And she says, no, you're going to make up a time. So oh like, okay, here we go again. Um, they really uh, want you to artificial carry artificial intelligence and, yeah. <laughs> and how dangerous it is. Is that okay? And she's like, yeah, that'll be great, you know. Um, anyway, I so what I did before the show, I still had a few hours. I, I was trying to think, where could I post something that's relevant to the conversation so people have access to more information because it's a huge audience right least, yeah it's a you know? pretty big audience for sure uh and um so i i wasn't sure and i i stumbled onto substack i knew it was there and i knew you could post articles there and i ended up doing that very 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 quickly just throwing something out there and getting it out in time to actually post it on the link on uh, the coast to coast website before the show and then I had this, you know, very strange conversation with Ian Punnett and um, <laughs> who I've very never strange. talked to. Probably never talked to again, but in, not, not that I hate the guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you just have different opinions, that's all. We're really coming from all comp alternative universes. But um, so afterwards, I wasn't sure what to do with the sub stack that I had just created one article. And I, the more I looked at it, I realized, you know, um, I could put, I can put like, podcasts on there i could put videos yeah. i can do you know all it's kinds not of things. just for articles so uh 50 pages later <laughs> on substack <laughs> which by the way is robertstanley.substack.com if anybody wants to go check it out uh most of the content is free and because uh, i got to the point where you know i just thought all right if i'm going to put this much time and effort into put you know what they call um creating content that's that's the buzz we're doing right I'm a content creator. I woke up one morning and I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm a content creator now. All right, whatever. Right. Um, so anyway, put together the sub stack and it started to snowball. And that's when I'm like, okay, so uh, how much content am I going to put on? Because I've got decades worth of stuff. You do. In, in, in all my files. And I wasn't sure how much I put out there and. Then I found out that Substack is based in San Francisco and that they've already been under a lot of pressure to, to literally just delete some of their their uh, users. Now, I don't know if they have or not. I, I only could find a couple of instances of that. But anyway, just the thought of them doing that after I put all that work into it was not what I wanted to, you know, wasn't where I wanted to be. So I found an alternative um, called Ghost. And it's the one it appeals to me because even though I have to pay for it, um, it's run essentially the the core group started in Singapore, but they are global in their reach. the The administrative staff is all over the planet, and they are dedicated to free speech, um, not hate speech, but just you know allowing people to actually express what they what they feel. Or know that what they believe, or what you know, and so without censorship or threats. Um, so, it, it, and the platform is actually very similar to Substack as far as you know the uh, functionality of it. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, I should. Um, you have that's an option of of putting your domain name, using your dom dedicated your own domain name. So, basically, what I've been wanting to do for a while now is Unicus Magazine 2.0. So it's a, 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 literally a subscription-based um, magazine format on the internet. And um, anyway, so unicusmagazine.com is actually back online. If you go there, just be patient because I'm still just putting everything together. I, I, I told you I was really uh, – I spent a lot more time recently on putting together Substack. So right. there's a lot more content there. But all that's going to be moved over to uh, unicusmagazine.com and um, a lot more. That's good. People really did enjoy your website, by the way. Thank you. Um, well, I, but, you know, I also got a lot of criticism said, man, this thing looks very amateurish. Did you, you know, can't you hire somebody to do the web, uh, be a webmaster? Well, that was also or... part of the charm, though. <laughs> well, okay. I, yeah, I guess so. But I... You know, I understand that there is there's an expectation of uh, what a so-called professional website is supposed to I, look like. I agree, no doubt. But again, that that website that when you first had it around, it was very nostalgic. I thought yeah. I was 
I thought it was uh, the year 1998. That was one. Yeah, that was the first time I put something up, and it was. Yeah, we. we ah, okay, right? it makes sense now. We were really no wonder just, I liked like, it. Training wheels <laughs> on this, and I did hire somebody to show me how to. Sure. Uh, yes. Do it myself. I all okay. Look, he created the template, and he right, says, right. "Here's how you upload whatever you know content." You know, you, you, you're you basically going to be in charge. I'm going to leave you here. And this is how it works. you have any questions, ask me. And so, yes, I've been actually doing web work since 1998. But um, it's it takes a lot of freaking time, you know. And to do it just as a hobby, it's like, okay, I enjoy it. But uh, at some point, I, I'd prefer to actually do, you know, make – make a little money because it's it it's not free for me to do that i mean substack is they take a percentage of whatever um but it takes a lot of time to set everything it does. up so, even though yeah, even though i've absolutely. a lot of the content i have it it takes time to upload it or you know and create the pages and link them up and all that stuff so um certain things yeah i do i, I don't mind giving away for free but but ultimately uh just to be fair yeah um some of that some of it is going to be behind a paywall and they they encourage you to they these Substack and other platforms they encourage you to uh, link up to social media, which as you and I were talking again privately, uh, I'll just I'll just say publicly I don't like social media, but other a lot of that's you know a lot of people are out there. So like yeah. if I post a link to UnicusMagazine.com on Twitter or linkedin or whatever face i hate facebook but um <clears throat> really sorry guys i just really <laughs> do not like facebook um and some of these other ones i looked at is like why what kind of weird perverted crap goes on there too much uh, way too much it's like what my son says it's toxic dad don't waste your time <laughs> like, yeah okay yeah uh but anyway it's so okay here, here's the ultimately why i'm even telling you this um I'll put all that content up, you know, in, over time. In due time. But the plan is, as I said to you previously, um, the plan is to, and I, I have to amend what I said before. My goal is to not only get off the internet, but it's to get off this planet and to get out of this universe, as you'd mentioned in that book, the, you know, disappearing, disappearing universe. Right. My goal is to literally exit the matrix as I understand it at this point. And I first read that book back in 2013. I was, I, and you know how I, f f this is so weird. Okay, so I do have a radio station, a streaming radio station off and on. I started it back in 2011. I didn't know what I was doing, but so I started it and then I stopped and then I started. This is the third time now that I've actually uh, put it out there, a streaming radio station yeah, on the, the internet. Third rendition. Well, it's the same thing. Okay, my format is uh, talk news comedy and music it's a weird mix i mean i don't i don't know anybody that's doing it quite like that but um it doesn't matter that's what i like but the thing is um i have to listen to the stream occasionally to make sure that it's working properly and that one night um, i just turned it on and there's me there's you reading from that book the disappearing universe and i'm i'm listening to it and i go man i i kind of remember doing this but i don't remember reading this book this sounds like a really interesting book <laughs> so i you know it's crazy it's like how did i and i'm still wondering how did i not finish that book or how come i don't remember reading it and then so i downloaded a copy anybody who wants a copy of this by the way uh just go to my Substack, uh robertstanley.substack.com and then scroll down to the article it's called the grand illusion and you can go ahead and just download a copy there um so I'm reading it and I'm going, oh my God, this actually makes more sense than anything. And I, and then I started to realize, oh, well, now I see why I so-called forgot. My ego did really didn't want to go there. Something, not, yeah. Yeah, I did, did, it didn't it. like the fact that it was totally irrelevant <laughs> to the bigger picture. And that, um, anyway, it was protesting and um, doing a very good job of distracting me, thinking that I'm something I'm not and that I need to be doing something that is you know only important to my ego um, anyway 
I'm not alone in all this, obviously, and I, I hope people don't think I'm complaining. It just, it was kind of shocking to me, and but also in a good way, I was like, oh, wow, this, this, not only does this make sense, I actually feel better now that um, I'm not engaging in uh, conflict or competition, uh, because that's what keeps us engaged in the illusion. We focus our intention on things to, more typically when we think that it's a threat um, and or a considered to be a problem we try to solve it right it's funny okay. how our minds work well and but see that's the whole thing yeah. is it's really is it's all about the mind right you know and the ego. um the belief that we are separate from god or that we could possibly ever be separate from god and that's how this universe was created by us it started as a singularity but then it quickly became it kept dividing and dividing and dividing on itself uh until it became something very complex and chaotic and a bit of a trap for some souls that you know we get stuck here thinking that believing excuse me believing that we we're actually a physical body having a physical experience in a physical universe when it's really more like a movie um which doesn't really trivialize it because you think about it, a, a movie is a full on production with a lot of people participating. You right, gotta have script yes. writers, you gotta have actors, you gotta have support, you know, producers, uh, all that stuff. And more importantly, it's worthless if you don't have an audience. Exactly, you don't get paid either. <laughs> right. Nobody goes see their movie, it's, yeah. It's like you don't exist then. <laughs> right, so, no, see you're right, that's right. And that's the whole thing, we're, anyway. So the more I read and the more I thought about it of this book, um, I think his name is Gary Zubrin. Not that it matters. It's like he's just another musician who had kind of been drawn into this and was kind enough to actually write about it in a way that was very... Um, Which is hilarious, by the way, since we're all musicians. Yeah. <laughs> I, I caught on to that right away and I'm like, oh, that's why Robert likes this book. Uh, that's part of part it. Of it yes. Part of the appeal. Part of the charm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I get it. Well, it's also not religious. I mean, there, there are, there's some biblical stuff yes, in there. Yes, but it's but... more for clarification. It's not like they're. In fact, if anything, it's a refutation of of <laughs> the the misunderstandings um, or misrepresentations of things that Jesus did, and um, and you know how that was co opted obviously to create another layer of lies to keep us here or at the very least confuse us so that we would stay here longer because ultimately if i understand this correctly is we all wake up at some point back in heaven and just go whoa that was whoa that was a trip that man. was an experience yeah <laughs> i don't think i want to do that anymore you know what's odd is i as soon as i um just now i open the the pdf format just to uh, be oh. on the same page and i i just i'm randomly Literally. moving my thumb up and down and i land on people are like ghosts except on a seemingly <laughs> different level so i mean that's pretty odd that i that's the first thing my eyes see mm -hmm. and it okay so you know when we watch a movie the, it's very much like a ghost it's like yeah there was a real person pretending to be someone real um and we we agree to suspend our disbelief long enough to participate in the illusion that we call in a movie because we want to be entertained and maybe we'll learn something profound in the process and all that you know uh but when when i stopped and realized how this happened or i should say why we we originally had the thought of um god i wonder what it'd be like to be separated from god and boom, there was this like a daydream thing that happened. And um, it, it, I wouldn't say it solidified. It just, it, it became more realistic the more of us that participated in it over a period of time. So like, okay, we know Star Wars is fictional, but, you know, over time, so many millions of people uh, watch it and start getting caught up on it. And it's like, it becomes an alternative reality. Right. I mean, it's, we, we know it's not real, but right. <laughs> it's like uh, magic, I guess you can say. Yep. 
because that's what an illusion is right it's not because it's magical or anything of that sort it's not a trick it's just uh it depends on the person who invokes it i guess you can say because mm. it represents a i guess you can say a magical vision of sorts yeah and so there are aspects of this um so-called universe that are very um compelling you know but again it it is like uh, <laughs> without the audience there's no movie and we're, we're like ghosts we're, yeah we're, we are the whole thing so i think really i do think because uh, this comes up in the book too shakespeare i i do think he knew they actually to say who shakespeare was i it's weird i'd never seen it put that way before but anyway um uh, I do think he knew because when he said that all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players, uh, that it that's like a short version of what we're discussing here. Oh, he was right. Okay. The world is a stage, no doubt. Yeah. All right. But I so agree. what is the meaning of the play? And again, it, it, we've gotten so far away from the original concept, the plot. <laughs> the plot, the prodigal son right. decides to leave the family unit and he wanders away from his father and with his, you know, inheritance. And then he finally realizes, oh, my God, I screwed up. I, I want to go home. I'm going to humble myself and ask for forgiveness from my father because where, wherever I am right now sucks. I, I just can't stand this. I got to go home. You're in for the father. Well, and the family. And the family, yeah. I mean, so, these are things that are embedded into us, and we yeah. seem to want to get away from it. Uh, but at one, at some point in our lives, we we go back to it. It's inherited in our nature. Okay, it's like a uh, like it's crazy you know, like birds. Yes. Yeah, they have that beacon or they the uh, homing pigeons or whatever they call that homing instinct. Um, I do feel that I know it happened to me back in uh, September of 1985 briefly. I woke up and I was in the light and I was with, you know, that aspect of the Holy Spirit. And it said to me, I'm the father. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, what an experience, and, right? So, yeah. Yeah. But OK, so basically I went back to sleep into the movie thinking that I'm Robert Stanley and I grew up in Malibu and all that, you know, all the narrative that goes along with my character. In order to participate in the plot, you know, you you got to develop a character. So, um, you know, I've apologized in the past, Michael, for making mistakes. But the fact is I have to own it because uh, whenever you go speaking publicly, uh, there's a huge response there. Because people are looking for answers. And, and I, like, I believe what I've said in the past, but I also believe now that what I said was wrong based on new information. And I've, I've always been very on, upfront about that. Um, but it's also very embarrassing to tell you the truth. It's like, man, I wish I never said half of that stuff. Now. I understand though. I mean, I listen to the shows I've done from the past and mm. ooh, it's pretty bad at times. And I, 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 like yourself, I go back and I hear myself and I, and I don't know who that is. Well, that's you develop, your character is developing through the, um, uh, usually through conflict and resolution and lies that have been ultimately found, whoops, found out to be, uh, you know, re re revealed. Right. Life is so uh, crazy, Robert. It is. Well, this is where, a where really we wild now, ride. <laughs> it, it just seems to be exhilarating. And that's yes. one of the questions I, I did want to ask you really quickly here on, on the side was what exactly matters the most right now, Robert, in your opinion, um, you know, we're living in such chaotic times and yeah. just to cut right through the, the drama, the, the web of lies and deceit here, yep. what is the most important thing to just have your mind on and focus on rather than the outside? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness of yourself and others. Mm. And it becomes a lot easier once you understand or allow yourself to understand that this is an illusion, a movie, whatever. Uh, the real you, the real us, isn't here fully. We're watching this movie. We're kind of participating, but in, to various extents. Um, so forgiveness is the way out or the way back home, I should say. And uh, the more you practice that, uh, the quicker you're going to get back home. 
or wake up back home. Um, it also leads to the practice of non-dualism um, because how can anybody be good or evil when in fact this is an illusion? I'm with you on that one. It's hard to say. I know. Uh, to say, well, what is evil and what is good and and what's in the middle? It really just depends on your perspective, really. Well, in all, yes, but right. And that's why, again, I, okay. So this year I've been promoting, actually, I think it was started last year, but this so-called new revelations of the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. I know that sounds very religious, but it's not allegedly transmitted to a guy, a psychologist on the West Coast, who wrote that, I believe, in the 80s. A Course in Miracles was transmitted, allegedly, by Jesus through a woman, a female psycholo psychologist on the East Coast in the 60s. And that's what the book, uh, The Disappearing Universe, is about. And when I realized that, wait a second, there's two transmissions. Well, um, they both can't be accurate because they're they're talking about the same things, but from very different perspectives. So then that leaves it up upon the the reader to decide which one that that they feel is more accurate. Right. Which is kind of weird because like it's like a Rorschach test. It, it kind of is actually. You're right about that. But I, I again, I've God once I saw it. The way we're discussing earlier, okay, that this really is an illusion or a dream or a movie or however you want to call it. Simulation, probably. Yeah, it. yes, but it's not like something that we've been shown on a, a movie within a movie, right? About right, computers right. That's a little... And all the conspiracies <laughs> and stuff. All that stuff, that's just there to the conflict. Like I said, it's drama. They wanted to keep our attention focused on here and solving the problem. And But it's, yeah, that's not... You can do that as long as you want, but it's like a hamster in a wheel. You're not going to get anywhere. So in my opinion, at this point, okay, I know I've said this before, you know, and I hate to repeat myself, but um, it's possible I could wake up tomorrow and just change my mind all over again, but I doubt it. I really, really doubt it. I mean, look, I'm going to be 64 soon, and not that that really matters, but it kind of does to me. I feel like it's I've weighing been, in on you, but I, but okay, but I'm searching I, physically and mentally, I'm fine, I'm, especially compared to a lot of the, the decrepit people I, I'm living around here. But um, the, the, the bottom line is this. I, it's not a competition. I'm just saying that for me, I've been looking for answers for most of my life. And um, even when I thought that I found the truth, I, uh, there was part of me that was always been open to like, well, what if there was – what if – there's really something you're missing there, Robert. Did you ever, you know, a, do you leave the door open to the possibility, possibility that maybe there's there's something else you're missing? I don't know why I'm like that, but whatever, <laughs> you know, I guess it's turned out to be a good thing for me anyway. Um, well, you're and, a curious soul, Robert. Uh, yeah, I, I, okay. But, uh, but perhaps you, that. perhaps you aren't missing anything though, Robert. Perhaps it's, it's what true. was laid down upon you was just what you needed. Um, yeah, it's an enigma wrapped in a riddle. And that's I just, the thing. Uh, yes. Yes. Maybe okay, you already so. were provided with everything though, Robert. And you're <laughs> just, true. you're just uh, someone that seeks out more perhaps. Um, yeah. And also, okay. The way I process it is, is different. I mean, I, I know I'm not stupid. No, I just, you're I'm a very creative uh, soul. You're not, you're not stupid though <laughs> at all. I'm, kind of slow when it comes to certain things well, like i said we're also I, a little slow at, at certain things though I, you know I read that you beat yourself up in, too much here okay thanks i read that book back in 2013 i literally on the air and i just the fact that that some part of me refused to remember it tells me that okay wait a sec there really must be something to this thing that is described in that book about the ego um, uh, the bicameral mind or the split mind like we call the uh, subconscious and the conscious or the unconscious, super conscious, whatever. Obviously, there's this segregated part of us uh, for a reason. And the best explanation I, so far is the fact that we chose to entertain the thought of being separate from God. And, and hence, it's all popped into uh, existence or not real. Uh, the illusion was manifest. To the point where it's, it's it's a virtual reality. I mean, that's what movies are. 
but it takes it, you have to agree to suspend your belief Beliefs. or disbelief right yeah <laughs> well that's how it always starts off though it, it yeah. starts off with this sort of idea and then it becomes real mm -hmm. it's called a concept or conception it for a reason because yes we literally i mean this is this is for we know for a fact that the mind is not the brain and um it's probably better to call it the soul i agree and the collective mind we could call the spirit or the uh, the holy spirit is a massive super conscious entity um that transcends well whatever we think of as a state of being it's none of this that you know our normal day to day here in this little realm virtual reality whatever you want to call this world it's way beyond that um like i said i had a i had an encounter or experience where i actually was in it in you know immersed in it or emerged with it and um, yes you ha you've had some very profound experiences throughout your life um, robert a lot of people do but a lot of people don't want to talk about it publicly because it makes them sound nutty and um uh, that's another thing yes people are often afraid to uh, talk yeah. about these sort of things and that's one of the things I, I did want to sort of mention to you mm. that right now I kind of am like Jesus Christ I have many people wanting to cause physical harm to me and they want to cause physical harm to anyone in my vicinity wow. they essentially want to take me away but you know what Robert mm. I've learned that God won't allow me to be taken out or taken away so mm. I now live with zero fear just because of that. And I'm not even a religious person. And mm -hmm. that's how I feel. Pretty crazy, right? And this is a message that I received. And I don't care how crazy it sounds. The message mm -hmm. came through to me and sanctified me. And this is what I understand as the truth, Robert. Wow. I don't really, you know, usually say things like that. But uh, everything's off the table. And I'm just telling you how and what I feel mm -hmm. inside. Well, thank you for being so transparent. I mean, it's... Uh... Yeah, I don't often say that <laughs> at all. You know, I'm a, I'm sort of at a loss for words on how to explain this to people because it, it's like in the movie The Matrix, you can't tell somebody about it. <laughs> yes, you got to experience it yourself. Yeah. and the, You the really do. Thing, so, you know, <laughs> the thing is we're in it, but like, again, like a Rorschach test, you... If you see it one way, that's you believe that that's correct. And then if you come back later and you see it a different way, you go, wait a second, what happened to the other thing? You know, and so, okay, I put the article out there for people to read. However, one of the things that I realized when I'm doing putting together, what, two websites and a, and a radio station was that um, articles are fine. PDFs, books, all that stuff is great. But actually, um, most people like listening to conversations like this, podcasts, whatever. But even more compelling than that is video. That seems to be where most people on this planet are, especially now that everybody's, most everybody's got a, a so-called device in, in their possession and uh, it can receive video. So I've done a few things in the past, but my um my macbook is 10 years old and i started to do something on it and it was just like hey i'm gonna explode on you <laughs> yeah, yeah just stop it I'm, I'm about to blow up and i'm like oh yeah you need a really powerful computer if you want to just start making lots of uh detailed videos yep the more yeah the more layers or whatever components you put it's in gonna there take forever to render it's it, i don't care about that it's just i don't want the machine to like completely crap out on me um because i need it for other things than right, that. Right. so anyway anyway the bottom line is i ended up buying i found out i don't like the new mac i'm in fact i'm really over apple entirely even i've got i've got pcs i got mac I, i've been working on ever since we started unicus magazine back in 1990 is when i first become computer literate and um but and it's evolved a lot but so anyway i ended up buying another macbook a used one yeah a good one for for you know a reasonable price and um um i'm able to use that and so i'm just telling you the my goal while i'm here anyway <laughs> while you're alive well yeah so by the grace of god living the living the dream um 
is to put together some mini documentary type of uh, video, put it out there. Uh, like I said, that's really interesting too that I can post it on directly on a page in Substack or Ghost at unicusmagazine.com. Yeah, it's it's back. Um, so you can actually embed that content on the page as opposed to having to go to Rumble where they're constantly putting ads and lots of ads. Uh, people are, you know, putting weird comments on there and uh, you're lost in a sea of millions of people. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool. I figure if I'm going to actually do that, in fact, if I really do something, it takes me a while, I can put it behind a paywall. If people want to see it, then, you know, you have to subscribe. It's, it's not that much money. And uh, we kind of support each other in this endeavor, whatever that may be. Yeah, these, these are grassroots crazy. movements, basically, mm -hmm. and you have yeah. to support um, each other. Yeah, I try, I try and help other people. Because uh, people like, like me, Robert, my, my content gets buried right away. My stuff doesn't just organically happen. I have to be the one to push it out there because yeah. my show doesn't get results from anywhere, from anything. I'm heavily suppressed. It, it sounds crazy wow. because uh, a lot of in individuals, they say that, yet they have these mega followings. And, and yeah, I don't right. have these huge followings. I'm not going to go cry about being taken off any other platform when it happens to me, which has mm -hmm. happened so many times. I don't come on here and complain about it. I, I hmm. expect that to happen to me. Yeah, and there's new platforms popping up all the time, too. I mean, right. I don't know if that's good or not, but... Maybe not. <laughs> Well, the other thing is, like I said, ultimately there this, the whole thing. At some point, I don't know how many of us have to get out before the the whole thing is over. The illusion, the movie ends. But um, it, okay. Supposedly, the whole thing already. Okay, this is like a movie. Like a movie, of course. You don't start the movie until you know the whole. You have the whole script in front of you, right? The whole thing's been written. I believe that's exactly what happened here, too. And I mean, so-called scientists have said, you know, the universe does look like a record that's there. And we're just the stylist that's moving. That's, you know, it's it's very relative in that, you know, you are the stylist moving across the record through the grooves. But it's all there. And it's a weird concept, but I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. Is like if this was just a plot of a movie... Like any other movie, you can watch it as many times as you want. You can jump to one section or the other. Uh, so it's – that seems a lot more – to make a lot more sense to me. And also that you could like – the fact that we create movies within movies literally are doing that. Um, it's just like I, – I really feel like the ego is just trying to pro prolong this – because this is its reality. Well, man is, is stuck with playing God, as you know, uh, currently. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank there you. you go. Thank you. Be that's right. Because it occurred to me, the more I, this is something I can't stop thinking about now. <laughs> every moment of every day, I even well, in my dreams, you, I'm yes. thinking I, I about was... <laughs> this. What we're discussing is it's just like so important. Well, blow your mind again in, in a few. Keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what you just said, though, about playing God. Uh, this is our, yes, we are God here in our little creation, in our movie, our production. Uh, we're the producers. We're, but it is truly adversarial to the real God, our Father. And the definition of that is Satan or the adversary. That's what it means. We took an adversarial pos position, and that's what created the illusion of separation. That's the plot. What is the resolution of the plot? You, you're reunited with your father. And also, Robert, not to forget this part, which is always the most interesting part, hmm. is sometimes in the movie and in life, sometimes we're the antagonist. Oh, yeah. Which is <laughs> hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? You're your, you're your own worst enemy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of perspective, as I mentioned earlier on the program. Yeah. It's... It, it's pretty amazing what life is uh, really like well you know it, okay so this thing about what i was saying before about forgiveness it isn't it's okay let me i just want to qualify this clarify it a little bit better yeah it according to this book i'm reading that you were discussing the 
disappearing in, uh, universe. And the course, a course in miracles, is basically that um, if it's not real, there's really this. There's nothing to get upset about, and no judgment to be passed. And so, you know, forgive yourself for making the mistake of believing or, um, yeah, believing in the illusion. Um, and forgive others for for participating in as well. We're all we all chose to do this, so um, it makes a lot of sense. It's not so okay. You know, there was a Jewish holiday recently, um, uh, Yom Kippur, and Oy a lot vey. of people were saying to me, "You know, Robert, you need to atone. That's what we're doing. We're fasting. We're atoning and atoning like, yes. for your sins, huh? Um, how could you? And I, I'm thinking back in my mind. Well, that's not possible because you're not really here anyway, right? <laughs> you, you're a ghost. You know, but but more importantly, I realized that the word atonement, it really is at one meant. And that's the whole goal. It's not to, you know, uh, just for to be forgiven. It's also to be at one, to reunite the whole process of, of that, to let go of our perception of, of uh, you know, the flaw, whatever, the mistake, the great mistake, so-called sin, is that um, somehow we separated from God. And it's an illusion. It's not real. So we're um, all sinners. Yeah, in that regard. So, but the goal is at one mint. Some people pronounce it atonement. To atone, it, it break it down. It's literally a tone. Tone, right? A tone or frequency, and that frequency is. Uh, we typically call it love. That that emotional state of light that we embrace when we actually leave this fake reality, whatever you call it, the world, and move into heaven, and most people describe it, have had near-death experiences. Uh, I think I sent you, yeah, I did, I sent you that one guy's, he, that was pretty amazing confirmation, yeah. what he described. I remember. He said it was like a movie. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> it's funny because that's how I describe some of my uh, vivid memories and dreams of sorts. They're like small yeah. broken fractions fragments rather of a mm -hmm. film just split and i can't ever remember the beginning of those dreams it's always the middle or the end uh, never mm -hmm. the beginning and it, it's been frustrating me for the last uh, i would say 25 years now because i i have these very vivid dreams sometimes i astral project at times mm -hmm. i've been doing this for many years so I, i've kind of i wouldn't say perfected it but I've been getting better and better at it through the years, but again, I, I have, I just can't get over the whole beginning sort of a process. Mm. It, it never works. And uh, since we're talking about dreams, I was going to ask you how, how and if you've been uh, having any sort of vivid dreams. And I got to be honest with you uh, tonight here. Uh, I, I magically hurt my back somehow. Oh, the sciatica. Oh. So my life has been, um, it's been difficult just doing mundane things. It's, yeah, it's been making mundane things extraordinarily uh, difficult for me. It's affected me to such a degree yeah. that my dreams are about five times more vivid. And of course they're about wow. the end times, Robert. All right. And I've been having a series, the, this series of dreams for the better part of 15 years of my life. Huh. And it's, it's strange because sometimes the events, they alter, but usually it's always it always goes back to the sky turning black during the day then the clouds open up sometimes and some sort of flying saucer appears other times it's <laughs> fireballs raining down from heaven i suppose yeah and i see people running scared and their faces are always quite strange a terrified sort of like bewildered look wow. and i'm always thinking what the hell did my mind create but these right. dreams they they feel so real and I must not be the only one having these uh, visions right now. The world right now seems to be in a strange phase. Culture is mm -hmm. shifting and more and more fireballs are, are becoming more um, a thing that's being recorded as you, oh, I'm yeah. sure you know, yeah. but as yeah. of as of late, there's been a, an increase of fireballs over the past years and some scientists believe that the sun will be our ultimate dem demise while others believe an asteroid would right. be our proverbial nail in the coffin and uh you know matter of fact there's an asteroid bennu and if it passes every six years i believe and 
it could potentially collide with our planet and they're saying like in 159 years from now so no one gets too worried but th these things are quite extraordinary to me and i think no matter what humans on earth are faced with uh, that that time we will sort of figure out a way to circumvent such obstacles but whether we live or die robert this planet will thrive just fine without uh humans here <laughs> in the illusion yeah exactly oh um, good lord um okay that's a lot to, there, there's a lot i'm sorry to just unload on no you no like no that. that's okay first of all i most of my early years i had back problems because from uh trauma ah okay multiple traumas to my yeah lower back and uh so i know about sciatica and that uh uh it's very debilitating and also very draining uh, the energy over the, 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 any kind of prolonged injury or stress like that. It, it gets to you. Uh, it just drains your physical and mental capacity. At least I felt it did. But I these mean, dreams, though, Robert, these dreams are what? crazy, the ones I'm having. <laughs> They're like yeah. religious. Well, okay, so um, I don't hear music in my dreams. However, when I do find myself at times playing music, usually a guitar, in my dreams, I'm really elated by it. Oh, wow. And because, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just weird. Um, I'm just mentioning that to you because you brought up the dreams. Yeah. But we know that like, movies um, really can't, they don't make a movie without music. That's right. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, silent films aren't made anymore. No. Well, even the silent films, they would have somebody like a, uh, an organist. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, in the theater. They would have something. They had an organist playing um, to create a heightened emotional state. And um, I'm bringing it up because there is music in heaven that is part of our natural state. And it is exquisite. The harmonies um, and the, uh, the light. That is associated with it because sound is a wavelength or wavelengths. And when you accelerate beyond what we call sound, you ended up with light. So it everything is waves. The, this is the thing about our so-called real universe is that it's, um, it's just a bunch of, I should not no, I'm trivializing it again. It is made up of waves that interact or interfere with each other to create these patterns that we recognize as reality. Right. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> Strangely enough, when you do hallucinogens, you see these, yeah. these patterns as well. Yep, that's like peeking behind the curtain. It's now. beautiful. That's it's, all I'll say. Yeah, I, it's right. There, It's based on, this is a copy or a projection of something real. And that's why we can relate to it. Just like a movie. We look at that. You know, you know those are real people. Yeah, they're pretending to be somebody else, but you know those are real people. Exactly. And they're in a real place, and they're doing real things, but it's under, um, you know, a uh, fictional uh, scenario. Because <laughs> I don't know. You Have you ever been on a movie set? Is this, have you ever gone to a movie set or been worked there? Uh, not personally, but I, I've had friends that have. Okay, so I've done a few things, and the the deal is this: you it takes all day to do one minute. That's what I hear. Yes, it <laughs> takes least. forever. So it, that's if everything goes right. Yeah, and if you're so, an extra, you're screwed. Yeah, it's and I have been. I've done. Oh, you're so, there all forever then. Yeah, and, <laughs> right. It's very boring. Oh yeah. But the bottom line is, you get to see what's going on behind the camera, and. Uh, <laughs> oh, you don't want to know how sausage is made. Right. And, and that's the whole thing. There's actually, so what we think of as the antagonists here or the producers, like in the, the Truman Show, mm. there's all these, these mm, the supporting uh, production crew. And um, they're keeping this thing going. They're, they're, and they're, they're you know, that's because without it, they disappear and they don't want that. They want to extend their existence, even though it's illusory. They want it. That's their desire. That's their will. Collectively and individually, that's what their desires are, is to remain here. So, and the thing is, what I'm learning is, or remembering, I guess it would be probably a better way to put it, is um, that's fine. You know, I'm not here, we shouldn't, and that's why we're not supposed to judge others, because that's their choice. That's their free will. They're exercising their free will. My free will is telling me, um, I'm going to practice forgiveness and just be... Um, moving towards the goal 
which is to ultimately leave this you know, so-called universe and not come back. I'm sure that's why a lot of people, when you, when you listen to these near-death experiences, and the, the commonality is this, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I'm so happy to be here. And then somebody says, taps on the shoulders and go, oh, um, by the way, it's time for you to go home now or back now. And they're going, no, what? No, uh-uh, I'm not. Next thing you know, they're being, they're, being sent, they're being sent back. The reason is they're not finished with this, whatever they, they're engaged in here, family, friends, careers, you name it. All that stuff is like we get really entangled in it and caught up in that, you know, the illusion of playing the character. And if you're not done, then, you know, well, you better get back there and finish that scene. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not really. Oh, God, we get so caught up in no, it. It's okay. so real, man. <laughs> well, that's what it's always about. And then when you start thinking about it, you begin to, all, well, at least for me, I, I think of free will and determinism. Mm -hmm. That's always the conflict I, I have. Yeah. Well, I hope you feel... Uh, well, yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> Uh, I, mentally, you know, I because I, I, like I said, I suffered from that for literally decades in my earlier years, and uh, it's 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 not pleasant. No, it, it's a it's a one of my uh, sources of conflict. When I'm quiet in a room, my mind will go there. Even if there's people I I, I love and respect, uh -huh. uh, I'll I'll start spacing out into uh, these thoughts. It's very hard for me sometimes. I don't know why. Well, so are you getting any kind of health therapy, whatever? No, but I mean, this is only something that's happened in the last two years or, or so. Oh, wow. Well, where I'm in still... conflict now with, with this uh, concept. Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you what helped me was uh, acupuncture. And because my wife's Chinese, she had family members. I was able to go down to like where they don't even speak English over oh. there in Monterey Park. And I met with a specialist and he knew that through a translator, he says, yeah, your spinal cord essentially is inflamed. Ooh. And uh, people have been saying, yeah, you should get acupuncture. Well, it, it, it wasn't just that. It was so he was using the heating, incense, coils, whatever, and also electricity through the needles. And I mean, it was pretty, in, it was pretty intense, it sounds like. Yeah, it wasn't painful. It actually, and it did help. That's the only reason I'm mentioning it. Um, also, um, uh, whatever amount of stretching that you can do. Oh, that's also something that's really been helpful. Um, the ground yeah. and, of course, uh, yeah. yoga balls and just mm -hmm. uh, just getting on the ground and stretching is what I, I've been up to. And it, it has been helping, no Good. doubt. Do you, do you ever walk around um, barefoot on the soil or grass? Yeah. On this peach? Yeah. Yeah. That, I, I, that's good. Mm -hmm. the, the ultimate thing, though, Michael, is really inflammation. Right. That's, that's whatever caused the inflammation around there. Is, that's what's causing the pain. Well, so, the thing is, I sat down and I was sitting in one of these really cheap plastic chairs and uh -oh. I, I was leaning all the way down and like my butt cheek was pressed up against uh, the edge. And it, I think that's what did me in Uh huh. because I did it more than once. So, you know, that's never good. Well, OK, so but you can reverse the damage. I believe I could. But you also need to reduce the amount of swelling. Most of us are chronically inflamed from diet and lack of exercise and or just carrying way too much stress yeah it all you know? it doesn't help no so um i'm i am a i'll admit it i'm a supplement junkie i i can't every, every day it's just like ridiculous how much uh vitamin do you take yeah and supplements a lot of it yeah. are, they're not classified as a vitamin but anyway the bottom line is i do is a whole regimen i do of clean water and supplements and exercise and uh, and Chinese herbs. Yeah, it's not so much. so much. Okay, I don't like the Chinese herbs. Uh, uh, but it does help my mental clarity and my physical stamina. And um, as far as that goes, um, it's it's pretty easy. It's a I think it's a way better alternative than being, you know, like uh, feeling tired and and. In pain. Yeah, I've just been in such a bad mood. There, oh, God. I've just been so angry. Uh, Tell me well, about, okay, with, yes. With everything, I've just been enraged. Michael. Um, there's Michael. never been so much, uh, you know, 
uh, my friend, I know exactly what you're saying because <laughs> I live like that for yeah. a long time. And it's, it's not fun for you or people, especially like you said, people around you that you love and you're just in this like, uh, uh, I've yeah, been trying anger to behave, zone. Yes. We, it, well, it's, it's, here's the thing. You, you cannot stop the, if you can't stop the pain <laughs> at some point, you start projecting lashing pain at other people. Yeah. Yeah. And then people do that to me all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> so I understand. That's well, why okay, I'm so like, the I, I'm the antagonist though, for a lot of people out there. So <laughs> I get it. I understand. Okay. But you understand. When, all right. When's the last time you forgave yourself? I do that every time I wake up. <laughs> okay. Good. I forgive myself of all my sins. All right. And you're forgiving others too, I hope. I have. Good. Well, that's, you know, because I do think that's a, if you hold, when we, any of us hold on to the anger. Uh, yeah, and any of those negative emotions, it's a, it, it does create a dissonant patterning that ultimately that itself will cause inflammation and pain. I believe it does. Over yes. time. Yeah. It really does do something to you. And that's what I've, I've learned from uh, this experience with uh, the, the sciatic nerve there. It made me really appreciate things in my life. And even though it's brought great anger and hostility, it's also made me balance myself out and pull myself out from uh, feeling this way because even though i'm angry i'm still able to get myself out of that mental state still which is important right some people stay stuck in that i i didn't though robert i, I don't want you to think that i'm you know constantly in in that mood i'm, I'm still able to pull myself out luckily mm -hmm. before i do something stupid oh god which is what the world seems to do it wants you to be in, wants all of us to remain in conflict. I agree. Whatever that is, it's a mind virus. Okay. I guess that's one way of looking at it. Or it's something. Well, okay, look, since you brought that up, virus is a, not a living thing. It's a, it's a program. It's information. That's, that, that's all it is. It, and it's designed to replicate within a living cell, but it is not alive. Technically, it's not alive. And that's a conundrum. If you ever really, I looked into it, I was just like, whoa, whoever created that or whatever created that, <laughs> it's like, that's a really wicked thing to do. Um, but if you, okay, so when I take a step back from this, if I could really become uh, neutral about it all, take that perspective, this is, like I said, um, movies not only need music, they need drama. And the only way you can create drama to keep your audience engaged is conflict um in when i learned how to write script it's called uh plot complication you so yes you've got to have an antagonist and a protagonist but typically your your protagonist uh has to go on a journey of uh conflict or complications mm. that are ultimately resolved and that the character evolves in the process at the end so-called the uh, finale um yeah, there's you got to feel like there's a journey there, and I'm sure that all of us feel that we we're on a journey. But what is that destination? See, that's that's that it's not just about leaving here. It's about where am I going? Where are we going? Where do we choose to go? And I've already been to 59 countries. I tell you, it's an interesting <laughs> planet. It's just kind of you know a lot of beauty and stuff. But uh, now that I know. <laughs> I've already looked at the brochure about heaven. I'm like, oh, okay, I think I'd rather go there. And, oh, by the way, that's that's where I came from? Yeah, I'll just go home. That's the thing. We're not from this earth. That's what I, no. I've always well, been trying to tell. We're not from this universe. That, people, that's what the bigger thing is. Yes. Like, yeah, okay, okay. I'm glad we can have this conversation, Michael. I really think it's important because not oh, it just is. you and me, but yes. other people are going to hear this and go, what are these, what are these guys talking They're about? They're confused, I'm sure, but uh, in, in uh, time, they'll learn. Well, and that's the thing. We're all learning. That's the whole reason that this even happened. See, that's you know? that's what where my conflict comes in with what I was telling you about free will and what? determinism. Here what? we are again. Was I supposed to go through this uh, this journey, this warrior's journey, as you're describing? Mm -hmm. What you mean? Is this a coincidence? Was it an accident? Was it intentional? Was there a reason? Um. We all chose to be here. This path, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it, it here's the thing: it, it's the longer that this thing uh, exists, 
it's become more and more complicated because that's how that's what's keeping us here is the conflict. But, you know, the more you can only create so much conflict and then it, it, the whole thing collapses. And that's why we see so-called historically they have to reset it. And and like I said, this is one of the things I need to apologize. People have probably heard me talking about the divine reset. Klaus Klaus. Schlaub. That's a strange name, I know. <laughs> He's a weird guy, too. It makes me feel like a snail just crawled across my tongue when I think. Um, anyway, <laughs> Klaus Schlaub, uh, he, he was saying the, the, the great reset, but I say it's a divine reset. However, I was still saying that from, from a point of ego, uh, like a Star Wars, is the way I was looking at it that there was this, this great conflict, you know, that somebody started. And um, like, it wasn't exactly wrong, but it wasn't the whole story. And um, details matter, you know, especially when you're trying to figure something out like this complicated. It again, it started off very simplistic, but it became rather complicated. Just for those that's souls, spirits that that have been here for a while, playing their our parts, you know, the passion play that we're doing here, um, especially when we. Um, Oh no. If you're hearing this now, that means we have already skipped over to Patreon. If you want the rest of this interview, please go to patreon.com forward slash Michael Deacon and subscribe and join us. We'd love to see you out there. Remember, you can subscribe for as low as a dollar up to.